This is the TC Wanderer. I'm going to put a 5 volt USB charging port under the seat. Uh, luckily the Wanderer has a spare plug and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is to remove the seat and then underneath the seat we have all the wiring. So let's have a look at that. Just simply using your key turn it to the front of the bike and then the seat will be able to just be removed quite easily and then we have the cables underneath let's go and have a look at the cables and here we have our battery cable coming in our positive and negative and the comms ports RS485 um, as well as the sensing cables so over here this connectors there is a white connector with a red uh, protective cover around it um, that's we're not interested in that one we're interested in this uh, opaque white connector on this connector you'll notice that there's a spare plug and this plug has a green and a brown wire and it's actually 12 volts and the 12 volts comes on when you turn the key on so we're going to put a little buck converter that converts the 12 volts into 5 volts DC for charging and also we're going to put make up a little plug that actually goes onto this socket this is the a plug adapter that I bought I got it from Amazon it's actually made in Japan so I actually bought it from Amazon Japan but I'm sure you can get one from Amazon in your local area I'll put the details in the description below we're only using half the connector um, this one is already on this on the Super Soko, so this is the connector that we'll be putting on um, that plugs into the into the plus and minus connector of the Super Soko, and this then in turn will go to the buck converter from the 12 volts to 5 volts USB adapter. These are the connectors unpackaged, so this is the one that we'll be using today, and it uses the male spades. So basically we're going to crimp these and then they go inside here and then later on this, this actual connector will plug into the uh, Super Soko into that 12 volt connector. You will need a crimping tool to do the connectors so I'm just using a normal crimp connector. Um, so if you don't have one of these then I recommend you get one otherwise you won't be able to do the small little terminals. This is the crimper with the jaws open. Uh, this here, they're chrome plated on the inside here. Um, if they're not chrome plated, it doesn't crimp. It doesn't go smoothly. So I recommend that you spend a little bit extra and make sure that the inside of these are polished chrome plated and the crimps will go beautifully. When you're doing the connector, please remember that the brown wire is positive and the green wire is negative. If you're not sure you can use a multimeter to check but that's the connection okay so just remember brown is positive green is negative. When you're putting this connector onto here please remember that you get it the right way around so that your positive is brown and your green is negative. You have know, just plugged it in you can see when it's plugged in with that little tab so the tab when the tab faces you greens at the top and browns at the bottom this little tab here just unclicks and then the tab pulls out so you'll actually have connectors in the end here when you've finished your crimping okay this is the DC to DC converter or buck converter whichever you'd like to call it so we're just going to open it up and we'll have a look inside and see what it looks like. Yes, yeah, so this is it. It's a 15 watt DC to DC converter. Uh, red is positive, black's negative, 12 volts, and the output is 5 volts at 3 amps. So this actually has the two USB connectors. So what I thought perhaps um, one of these I'll keep under the seat and the other one I'll put through uh, near where the side of the 
storage unit is where the batteries are and it can be in the battery compartment as well. So this works out quite well. So you can see here the two cables. Now we're just going to put these uh, onto the terminals and put on the connector. So one thing that I did notice is that the positive doesn't have any fuse. This does have protection inside if you reverse the, the polarity and so on, but I prefer to have a fuse and I'd rather this, if something went wrong with this module, the fuse for this blows rather than the Super Soko fuse. So I've got a little inline fuse um, holder and I've put in a 5 amp fuse. So what we're going to do is just uh, cut this wire here and then I'm going to cut this wire here and then we'll strip the wire back and then we're going to solder them um, onto the cable. That's one here and then we'll solder and then we'll strip this one back. And just tin the wires. Oh, one thing that I will need to do before I actually solder them together is to slip some heat shrink on here. So that's nicely tinned. It's nicely tinned. So I have some red heat shrink. And I'll just put that on here. Oh, it's just a little bit too long. Let me see on the other end if this fits this way. Uh, just that's fine that's all I need is just and let's put this on here that's been done that's quite nicely check the connection beautiful soldered very nicely and then that's going to be slipped over and then we'll shrink the heat shrink down and then we have our inline fuse installed so the next thing we're going to do is to Put these connectors onto these wires. With these type of connectors, this is a soldered joint. It's not recommended to actually use a soldered joint for these connections. Uh, so we're going to cut them off and we'll go back to the plain copper wire. While we're cutting them, we might as well make them the same length. So we'll cut them here. So now both the positive and negative are the same size. And then we'll strip these back. Forgive me for the way I'm stripping them, but it's, uh, I've been doing electronics for a long, 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 long time. So this is second nature to me. If you're not sure about how to uh, strip the cable, you can just use a proper set of uh, cable strippers, wire strippers. So they're now done. So now we're going to get our connector, uh, our crimper, and then we're going to put our little uh, little lugs inside and then we're going to crimp the crimp the wires. We don't need this yet. Okay so now we're going to crimp the wires. So I'm using the 1.25 to 2. So what you can do is you have your positive, it doesn't matter which one's which, but this lays in here. The plastic, the plastic side here goes into the biggest part of the crimp, this area. And then the wire goes into the narrow channel. So that's the way that we're actually going to do that. So we can just hold it in here. Uh, and then put this onto the crimper. And we're going to crimp it in. And as you can see, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful crimp. And then we'll just close the top section here. We'll just do it on the widest one first. And then we'll go down to the second one here that crimps the plastic. And then I'll just make it a bit tighter in the smaller size, which is the yeah, point, uh, point 0.3 milli. There we go. Just double check here. Yeah, so there's our connector. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that that's tight. So we're going to pull really tight, really hard. Pull, 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 pull. It's definitely fine. So the key point here is um, with this wire, don't touch it with your fingers because you're going to put oil onto the copper wire, which is not really good. So we don't want to do that. Okay, let's try it again on this 
this one here so we just put simply put the cable in lay it on top open up your crimper put the crimper in make sure the wires in squeeze tightly shows you here uh, actually um, close here it actually says close here so that's where you want to actually close your crimper to to, to know that that's done and then again we're just going to crimp the top part in make sure it's overlaid there we go nice and round it's crimped on the plastic I'll just bring it down a bit more here we are look at that that's beautiful beautifully crimped so this is nicely on the plastic this is nicely on the plastic so that's a lovely crimped connector again we're just going to pull on it pull 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 it's definitely not coming off so these, these are a really good set of um, uh, crimpers so they work very well okay so uh, the, these are on so I've put had my fingers on those lugs so I've had my fingers on these lugs here just pulling them so I'm just going to give them a quick wipe with a paper towel and then same with the black one just to make sure there's no oil on there for my fingers okay and then this goes into the connector now I, I will put a diagram up on the screen to make sure that you put them in the right way these actually go in and they're inserted with this tab this little uh, tab here I don't know if you can see that um, it faces towards you and this tab faces up towards you they go in this way does it go to the front or to the back so don't forget the orientation that I talked about before green is negative and brown is positive so we just want to double check that they're going in the right way okay so with this tab facing up this one's facing this way it, this one goes to the closest one facing you which is the negative that's going to plug into the green wire so you just simply put that in sorry I've moved the camera over here apologize so you just simply put that into the little hole and push it you'll hear a click and it's in and then this one's the positive and it's the same orientation this little pin faces towards you and we put it in and you hear it click so now both pins are inside hopefully you can see that and there's our converter so now we have the positive and negative connected there's an inline fuse and this is ready to go into the super soco so let's go to the next step okay so we're at the back of the soco now in the seat so here's our converter i'll worry about putting it in at the right place later but let's have a look here so this is the connector with that we've just put on so let's put the connector in before we click it in place let's check so black which is the negative goes to green and red which is the positive goes to brown so that's good so what we have to do is just click it into place that's done now the connectors in and so now we have our 12 volts going to our converter through a fuse and this should give us 5 volt USB uh, power so next thing to do is to check and see if it works all right I have my action cam uh, battery charger here which has got the USB so this is my uh, buck converter cable USB cable let's plug it in that's plugged in okay now if this goes to plan we should have a blue light there's no battery here and a red charging light here I'll just turn on the super soco Ah, and there we go instantly we have our red light and blue light so our USB charging port is actually working and what I'm going to do now is show you how to route the cable keeping one USB cable under the bottom here and the other one's going to go through here basically and up into the tank area so that'll be our next step so the next step is I've got some double-sided tape and I'm just going to put it onto the back of the converter and that'll stick in here I've put alcohol on the back and washed it so that it'll stick very well okay the final step it's going to be put inside 
next to in in here next to the connector uh, it's a bit hard to see with this camera but uh, I'll show you when I put it in okay so there it is you can see where the battery cable is that comes in the charging cable and it's just in front of that is where I actually put it um, and you can see there's one USB cable here that cable is going to be just put here and the other one I'll show you where that goes that goes straight through and up and comes out in the tank area so let's have a look at that next so as you can see the cable comes out here it goes through this gap where the actual back of the where the actual uh, lid opens there's a gap here it goes right onto the edge of that and then basically goes down to the uh, where I showed you the buck converter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two holes here very tiny holes one here and one here and then use a cable tie to just tie this cable down and that way you can um, move this up when you want to take the plastic uh, lid uh, out the plastic box out or you can just lay it back down when you want to put the put it back in and uh, the USB cable can just stay here the gasket itself that's on the lid this is the rubber gasket that's on the lid that's just going to sit nicely over the top of this so there's, there's, there won't be any harm done whatsoever and then you've got a nice little 5 volt USB charging port inside your storage area so I'll just show you the final result next okay so here's the two holes that have been that have been drilled and I'm going to slip a cable tie in there and that way um, it can secure the cable this is not on the plastic tray by the way the plastic tray edge is here um, this is on the main main battery plastic the battery casing plastic so this one still lifts out you'll see when I finish this after anyhow okay and there we have it cable tied in it's not going anywhere it's nice and firm and then that cable can just simply lift up and then the main case can come out so let's have a look at that so here we have the Super Soko uh, storage unit the tank part is closed so let's open it up and we can see that the USB cables here and then your, your plastics in here if you want to take that out you can see the USB cable just flicks over you can take this out you can take your batteries out it's not in the way when you're finished you can just put the plastic back in USB cable just simply goes over the top and you're ready to go again very simple so job done so now we have 5 volt USB charging inside the storage unit and we have our USB charging cable in the back under the seat there okay so thank you for watching I hope you could actually understand what was going on in the video and if you want to do this I've left the links below for the various items that you need for the project thank you very much